Hold out. Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to King Bespoke Creations. Now, today, we're going to make a nerd table for a geek room. Not my phrase. But it's a coffee table that has lots of pull-out sections to put board game mats on or the great big one for jigsaws and all this kind of stuff. I was sent the link for the build for this um, from friends of mine. And I thought it'd be interesting to do. Generally, I build stuff from in here. So following someone else's instructions, well, might be a bit of a challenge for me. Let's just see, shall we? So the first thing I found when looking at the description was the cut list to see what parts I need. And they list every small little section for each individual draw. That got far too complicated, so I've just ordered lots of big lumps. Okay, so this whole table is four foot by three foot. It's pretty big. Um, and what we basically have is a top section that's 18 mil ply and a bottom section that's 18 mil ply and then three sections in between that will get cut up into individual drawers. They're 12 mil. Okay, so that's what we're going to start with. So the top and bottom pieces will stay that big and then those individual sections in between will get cut up for their individual parts. And then we also needed a big 6x2 chunk that's going to become the edges. And my first concern is that the three stages of draw runners that we need were going to be too wide for that 6 inch beam, but they do fit just. Right, so. The first thing we need to do then is create the two side supports and the one that goes in the middle. So we've got this big 6x2 block that's going to create the side sections that all the draw runners are going to work to. Um, and we also need one in the middle that's going to cover the two sets of drawers at the top. The bottom drawer is a full width job for your massive jigsaws. Right, so that's the edges cut out, and then this four by one section that's gonna go in the middle. Um, I've cut this a little bit shorter because this is what I'm gonna use for the draw fronts. I want them to sit flush and butt up against this at both ends. Now, the design that I've got actually wants us to do that on the end blocks as well. I'm not going to do that. I think if the draw fronts sit on the end, it's too much easy to, to catch them and start pulling the drawers out when you don't really want them to. If they recess in from that side, I think that's going to be a little bit neater. It's going to catch less. Um, so that's what I'm going to go with. And you can always adapt any design you ever get from anyone. Now the guide says to use a pocket hole jig, but I don't have one. So I'm going to mark off from here where I need that screw to sit. So I want that to come in like that. Okay, it only needs a little bit poking out the bottom. So I'm going to mark off that the drill bit needs to go in. Much easier to drill in from this side than to come in at that, st at that steep angle from the sides of the beam. Coming from the bottom, it's much easier with the drill bit. And that needs to poke out and come out to there. So that's, that's the angle that we need to be drilling from as we come through. So we're going to come in from the bottom, poke out the side, and then make the hole on the side a little bit bigger for that head to recess into. So now that we've got all the holes drilled and we know they're the right depth for the screw, there's enough screw poking out to actually grip something but also not too much it's going to poke out the top because that would just be terrible. I'm going to apply the glue. So wave down the middle and I just like to do a line on each side. I don't like to do excessive amounts of glue because then it just squeezes out and makes a mess. Okay, so that will do it. And then put that into place. And then make sure you always 
rub that joint together and the glue starts to actually suck the wood together using capillary action. Right, now this is where I'm going to differ slightly from the plans. So I've been reading the plans and after screwing these on, we're supposed to then take our 21 inch wide sheets to make the drawers up. Now the only trouble with that is it's only going to be 21 inches exactly if your timber is exactly the same size as those in the description. On this instance, it isn't. By the time we attach the runners to each side and we've got the different thicknesses of wood, different companies' versions of the runners, we end up with a slightly different width. So I would always make sure that you put these in place first, then measure to cut the gap that you actually have. So then they're gonna fit and screw nicely to the sides and run in and out from there. But this front edge is different to the side. I'm just using the tape measure, okay? So I'm not measuring it, what I'm doing is pushing up against so can you see there, that just gives us the correct distance there, which all that means is I can repeat that on this side to know that that draw runner needs to sit that far away from the edge. And to make sure everything's even, I've put the top runner on, which is one of the long ones for your puzzle ones, the jigsaw pieces. Um, so then the third one, you can then match that in between to make sure it's an even gap all the way through. Right, now we have all of the runners on, which look rather splendid. So now that they're in, we can measure from the inside edge of that to the inside edge of that draw runner and that gives us 20 and three quarters of an inch not the 21 inches that we were supposed to have according to the descriptions right so we've started marking off on the thinner sheets now uh, the sizes of those draw bases that we want so we've measured the full width in between uh, and i'm going just less than half the distance in okay so we don't want the drawers that are coming from both sides we don't want them to meet in the middle so we want a bit of a gap and i also want the width of the draw front taken off that as well so we've got the full width from draw runner to draw runner and then just less than half with that included on the front now one of the best ways I've found to cut plywood is to draw your line on and then rub masking tape on and make sure it's stuck down really well and then just cut it through with a jigsaw and that way the masking tape stops the tearing from happening especially when we're going to go across the grain as well. So that's one board cut out into those four shapes. So you can see that's the first run done there. So that's gonna fit on this first row. So I now need to cut the second boards to fit these rows. So again, another four squares needed for that second row of drawers. Then we'll sort these ones out, which are gonna be two long full completes from one side to the other. Right, so we can see it's cut quite nicely. And if we just peel the masking tape off, that should give us a fairly crisp edge. Right, so now that we have all of the, the draw bases, if you like, cut out, um, what the designs tell us to do next is to put a frame around them 
using some timber, uh, which will then make it thick enough to screw into these nice draw runners as well, because that just isn't quite thick enough by itself. Uh, so there's my flat base. So I'm just gonna uh, run this along here. We're gonna get from there up to there. So just marking that off with the knife, it's as accurate as it can be then. And then we can trim that off again, same thing using the set square. Ooh, quick, super useful tip. If you're ever gonna use um, a countersink bit like that one, always do the countersinking first because you get a much smoother uh, dent, if you like if that works first. If you drill the hole first, you ever found if you drill a hole and then you try and you countersink the top of it, it judders and catches. Always do the countersink bit first and it works out brilliantly. And this is what this second row of drawers will look like. So we've got a slightly bigger compartment and then three little bits for your coins or chips or whatever it is that you need to play with that board game. The front will be finished off obviously with the, the draw front, so that will create a full square uh, with protected areas all the way around it. So the next part is to start screwing these in to the draw sliders. Now you can see on here I've set the distance back for how far the draw front's going to be. So that's going to fit nice and flush. Uh, and I put a little pencil line because that section there is what's going to slide out and attach to here. So I put a little pencil line on there and the same on the other side so then we can slide those out and get to the screws from here into this and it's all going to fit well. For level, what I'm going to do is just get the top of here travelling with the top of that section that's going to slide. So as that pops out, there we go. So we're going to have this section level with the top of there. Now remember when we're fitting this second row with the spacers on, you need to fit it upside down because this whole build has been done upside down. Okay, so make sure we're thinking about that, that we're not going to have them the other way up. Now, if you're getting any benefit from this so far, click the like button, smash the subscribe and ring that little notification bell thingamajig. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is make some legs. Now, if you look at the description in the plans for this, doesn't actually mention the legs anywhere at all. So I'm guessing this is a do what you want kind of deal. Uh, well, I'm gonna go for the, the block legs, kind of like it's got on the picture, but on the picture, it looks like the legs are literally just screwed to the base. Now, I don't think that's gonna be very strong. This is quite a heavy lump. Um, and if somebody then sits on coffee tables, which they always will, God forbid they actually dance on them, I don't think just some screws into the end of a chunk of wood is gonna suffice. So, we need to cut this uh, chunk of 3x3 down to our four individual legs. I'm going to do 10 inch legs. Uh, and then I'm going to use some of the offcuts of the ply to give a nice long skirt down both sides. And then on the front and the back, it's going to have a skirt that comes through and curves down rather than being a full length all the way across, just to give it a little bit of design in there. Um, and again, to go with the the dual wood aspect of this build. So we've got the plywood look and we've got the white pine look. Now, yes, that's gonna be all stained later on, but it's definitely two different types of wood. So let's go with that design and make it look like it's on purpose. So we can see how this is gonna work. So we have the full length runner all the way down the sides and on the front and the back, we've got this little section here that's gonna give the leg a lot more support in this direction. Uh, what I'm going to do to connect it all together, very simply, because there's lots of surface area there now, I'm going to glue these parts together first um, on all four corners. So we've got a frame going all the way around and then we can glue that down to the surface. Now I might then stick some screws from the underside into the bottom of the leg, just again, give it a little bit more stabilization. But the glue will be doing the bulk of the work along with the physical strength that these skirts will give. Okay, it's draw front time. Uh, so I got my little uh, set square like this, measured off that height. Okay, so this is a six by two, 
but of course that six ins is nominal what that means is it's been planed so that's the actual distance you can see it's quite a bit short of six inches uh, so what I've done is I've got three test pieces here these are all cut at one and seven eighths all right uh, so not two inches and that gives us pretty much the perfect height now we say perfect but obviously then there's no gap in between any of these so I'm going to work to this I'm going to make the draw fronts um, and then we'll literally plane down enough with a trusty old hand plane or oh, we love a hand plane uh, and that will make it fit really really nice hopefully so you can see I'm differing again uh, by putting screws in the ends of the draw fronts so we've got most of them done I'm just showing you how I'm fitting this last one so I've done both edges first and then all I need to do is plane this one to fit so it just doesn't quite fit in that hole it's really really snug at that end and it just wedges in there so that's a bit too tight so all I'm going to do is a couple of runs with the plane on both sides of this um, to make sure it's even and then that should slot in and out beautifully handles on uh, stained the draw fronts before putting the handles on to keep it all neat and tidy so they work really well we've got a nice pull to them that one works beautifully well all the way across uh, don't forget this is upside down so the next thing is to put the base on top so i'm going to screw that on which will then be able to go down the edges with the plane just to make sure that those joints are really super smooth and lovely and then we can stain the rest of it well then all there is to do now is turn it over so we can stain all the rest of the sides and the top easier said than done though this weighs about seven tons at the minute um, so there's no way i want to try and lift this up as it is let alone turn it upside down in this tiny workshop so all of these draw sliders click apart so you don't have to unscrew them there's a little plastic catch inside where you can just undo them take all the drawers out and then we can try and flip it over and paint the rest of it and it's done i'll see you on the flip side well there we go one board gamers table i think it's turned out quite nice uh, certainly once the stain had got on it looked really good that plywood on the top looked really really nice um, obviously there's loads of different types of faced plywood that you can buy so you can get big open grain stuff while this was tight straight lines um, pick and choose see what you can find as it goes for following the plans well you can probably see that about halfway through I stopped looking to be honest um, but if you need to go plan by plan step by step it's all there for you and it does make sense as well um, but don't be scared of changing the order of something or changing the measurements or changing it all together because it suits you better whoever's made a plan whether you're following one of my videos from Pascon uh, feel free to change whatever you need to to make it fit you better until next time sharpen your tools and I'll see you soon